In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and in today's video I'm going to show you a couple of methods to create this really cool glitchy glowing vintage VHS whatever you want to call it effect in After Effects. So what I have in store for you is I'm going to show you the setup of this project is basically a 3D render that I bought on Turbo Squid. I'll put a link down to all of the resources in the description and I put this 3D render into After Effects and used a really really cool plugin by Zybex. So before we get started the video I just wanted to say that this video is not sponsored by any of these creators. These are just some cool plugins that I like to highlight because I get a lot of questions about how these are made and i just found zybex as a really cool plugin manufacturer uh, so you should really check them out and without any further ado let's get into the video all right so the first thing we did was i created this setup in cinema 4d this contains a 3d model that you can find on turbo squid essentially what we do here is i made two materials in cinema 4d and i'm going to make it right now so i'm going to press create new default material and I removed the color and checked on luminance here. And on luminance, we create a texture and we're gonna make a Fresnel. And if we click on Fresnel, I'm just basically gonna change this gradient. So in the first one, I just made a black color, uh, then towards a darker red, like this, then towards a brighter red, and then to an orange. Like this so this gets this flamey fiery result as you can see i need to tweak it a little bit more but that's basically the gist of it and for the second one i basically did the same thing but this one was a little bit more simple so in the fresnel we're just going to remove all of these colors and we're going to change this color black to white and this one to cyan and actually now knowing this before i found out this works a little bit better on darker colors so in hindsight i might have changed this uh white angel renderer to something else a little bit more with more contrast if that makes sense anyways uh, then i just changed the render settings uh, i made a png sequence of 239 frames with a width 1920 by 1080 nothing too special in the render settings going on so i'll just show you real quick what my camera setup is i basically sketched a spline uh, like this, so I'm just gonna make a new one by going to the spline sketch tool and I basically drew out a line like this and with that I just grabbed the spline smooth and smoothed out this spline. So the next thing that I did was basically position this, so I think the position was something like around here. Uh, yeah, looking at it, it's kind of similar and we basically are going to use this spline to hook our camera to. So I'm gonna make a new camera, I'm just gonna basically hide the old ones. So basically we have our camera right here and under the object uh, this does it when you make a camera like this but i'm just going to make it from perspective and what i'm going to do is align to spline tag this and drop in the spline that we just made and we need to focus our camera towards the object so i'm going to make a null object and call it target grab the camera and add a target tag to it and drop in the null object that we just made so we're going to click on the target and drop it in here so we're going to move up our target here towards their faces and in the camera settings what i did as well was i basically made the focal length a little bit shorter and the field of view a little bit larger so now what we should do is if we go to our line to spline tag and we change the position as you can see basically we can move our camera along the spline here from the top to the bottom that's what i animated so i'm going to make a keyframe here and a keyframe to about 65 percent on the last frame So playing back, basically this is what our camera is doing right now. It's just moving along the spline. And what I did to create a little bit more of a dramatic effect, if that makes sense, is I grabbed the coordinates of our spline. And basically at the first frame, I just put a position here. And what I did next was on the last position, I just moved the spline around a little bit, making sure that the image stays a little bit interesting. And then just with a keyframe there as well. So now, right, so now both our camera is moving along the spline as well as the spline itself. And essentially what I did is I rendered this out and put it into After Effects, which we are going to use now and show you this crazy, crazy plugin. All right, so what I'm gonna do is make a new composition from the frames that we just made. So looking at this, nothing too special. And here's where the magic happens. We are going to use the modulation plugin by Zybex. So we're gonna drop that on here. And immediately you're getting this really, really crazy effect here, as you can see. So this thing comes with a couple of parameters. Let's just make this a little bit larger. So the Omega basically gives you more of these lines to work with. Uh, the phase as well, like this makes it really, really crazy. Nothing towards what we want, I guess. So what I try to do is just 
lower the omega a little bit more so this gives you a little bit more detail as you can see i try to keep it between 5.5 and 0.9 then the face you can play around with this but i usually just leave this where it is because it's it's really getting crazy there uh, the distortion basically gives you like i don't know if i play around with this this is basically points are getting like more and more detail as you can see if we zoom in here and we actually want to keep that relatively like the same so we can get this effect so we just keep this at 50 uh, but the cool thing is however we can also animate these so for example what we can do is animate the face towards maybe like i don't know 0.2 so along the animation goes this thing gets even crazier as you can see i'm gonna keep mine just at 0.50 because i just wanted to showcase this effect for now there's also an option to invert and like lower the opacity of this thing but for now i'm just gonna keep it the way it is i'm really happy because of how these lines are really detailed here and it gets more noisy along more to go to the right but as you can see the render where it has less contrast is a little bit hard to see right now so i would say i grab something with a little more contrast and you can see really well what's going on so now for the glow effect i'm gonna right click Click on pre-compose it's important to make sure that all of the attributes move move into the new composition so the modulation will be uh, put into the pre-comp the next thing i'm going to do is duplicate our pre-composition by pressing ctrl or command d on our keyboard and adding a gaussian blur to our second and top object here so something with like 25 should blur this thing out nicely and change the blend mode to lighten uh, if you cannot see the blend modes here you can just click right go to columns and make sure that modes is switched on so now we need to recolor this a little bit so what we can do is press ctrl alt or command option y this adds an adjustment layer which is basically an empty layer where we can add effects to so what we're going to do is add in the toner and the toner is essentially something similar to a gradient map in photoshop so if you click on pantone we're basically able to grab five colors uh, which will be mapped towards the light and dark felt of this image so for the highlights for example let's just prick a bright yellow and basically everything that's white or the lightest parts of this image will now become yellow now for the second part i'm going to make them red the third in the mid tones i'm going to make like really bright blue and the darker tones i'm just going to make a darker blue this and the shadows i'm going to keep it black and as you can see this already does a lot with our image as you can see essentially we're giving this a really really nice effect already and if you want to take this to the next level what you can do is also grab another plugin by zybex which is called signal and this gives us this really authentic vhs effect as you can see right here uh, for this i'm going to turn off the tape errors and what you can always do is play around with these i just turned on the chroma noise i think so as the Luma noise, a little bit to give this really, really nice distorted effect. This really looks like a broken TV visual. So yeah, this is essentially what we came up with. I'm going to show you this on the screen right now because live rendering does take a little bit when using these plugins. But yeah, so if you want to get the project files for these, I will put a link to our PNG sequence and the After Effects file in the description. You can get those by becoming a patron of mine. By becoming a patron, you get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorial videos, as well as a 15% discount in my own asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role in the Dread community server if you go one tier up you also get exclusive tutorials such as how to create your own death metal logos from scratch and the beginnings of illustrator if this is something you're interested in there's a link down in the description like i said so a huge shout out to all of my patrons because thanks to them i'm actually able to give you guys free tutorial videos on a weekly basis if you don't have the budget to support dread labs of course that's completely fine leaving a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already does a lot as well so i hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial thank you so much for watching this is tom from dread Labs tuning out and i'll see you guys in the next video